How's it going everyone? My name is Michael SK and welcome back to the Fruit of Grisaia. It has been quite a bit since the last episode and I do apologize for that. The sub growth here on the channel has seemed to slow down. It's been harder for me to really focus on making the crazy good content and to try and, you know, boost the views and, and whatnot. But yeah, that's that's sort of been the reason why there hasn't been any episodes here because I'm still doing the every 50 subs a new episode thing. I may be dropping that going forward. I really don't know. But what my plan was, I wanted to state it real quick before we jump back in, was there would be three more episodes of this playthrough. Once we get to 5,900, when we get to 5,950, and 6,000 subs. And I don't know how close we are to the end of this route, which would actually finally, after <laughs> four years, wrap up this playthrough here on the channel. I don't know how far we have to go, but the last episode will be at 6,000 subscribers. It'll be a long one, most likely, because it'll just be wrapping everything up. One long video to get the rest of the content, but this video, the next two, will just be an hour long, and the 6,000 subscriber video will be however long necessary. So definitely strap yourselves in for that one, and I guess let's jump back into it. I have no idea where we're at or what's going on, but maybe I'll figure it out after like 20 minutes. For crying out loud, there are countless varieties, already fucking up, of awkward misunderstandings in the world, but this one has really distinguished itself on the mentally draining scale. That's a cat. Very much a cat. Like a cheap LCD screen, the truth changes color based on your perspective. Best to view it from a fixed angle, find a few sources you can trust, and stick to them. It's actually true. Even actions you take with the best of intentions can be easily warped through misinterpretation into strange misdeeds. Happens every day, in fact. I sink into the sofa and heave a heavy sigh. I guess that's the end of that, uh, moment. A certain playwright once wrote that any sorrow's tempered if you have a friend to share it. And there's a long-standing British proverb to the effect of wine and friends only get better with age. But is there any truth to these claims? I'm not so sure myself. Let's say you set out on a trip lugging around a few bags, you'll probably experience some level of anxiety about them being lost or stolen, right? In that case, wouldn't it have been more pleasant to bring nothing at all? All the more so if you were carrying something truly precious. Isn't it better to lock the things you treasure away in a safe box? Or perhaps not to treasure anything in the first place? Yeah, that'd be... that'd be real simple, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be? I'm sitting in the lobby indulging in some after-dinner reading when Amane walks up with Makina in tow. I lift my eyes from the summer of doors and ask if they need something. Nothing wrong with using summer vacation to see your family. I don't see any reason you should apologize to me. I mean, we can take care of ourselves. We're, we're a grown-ass man. Not a problem. As long as I have beans to eat, I won't die. Are you making light of the nutritive qualities of beans, woman? I actually completely forgot about the food pyramid, holy shit. Piecing together your meals from all the groups, right? Pretty sure they retired that as too inflexible and restrictive a guideline. I see. Well, don't worry about it. I think I'll get by one way or another. <laughs> now that I look, Makin is latched onto Amine's sleeve. Her small shoulders trembling, combined with her diminutive frame, she looks remarkably like a lost child at the moment. What's wrong, Makina? 
you that broken up over Amane leaving for a while? I know you two, I know you two are practically sisters, but... Hmm? What do you mean by that? Amane gently strokes Makina's head a few times, then gives me an exaggerated shrug of the shoulders. Huh, how admirable. You're an exemplary guardian, you know that? Those idiots who get caught up playing basketball and forget their children in the car could learn a thing or two, a thing or two from you. Struggling already. It's gonna be a long hour. Who? Oh my god. Because it's funny. The girl must have heard her name in passing and reflexively inserted herself into the conversation. The ability to talk for that long without a clue about the topic could be called a sort of talent in its own right. True, the more impressive feat here is the total lack of comment regarding the cat perched on Michiru's head. But that one's less attributable to Michiru's talents than our well-honed ignoring skills. Seems Amane is going home as of tomorrow, and she's taking Makino with her. <laughs> いや、いや、ちゃんと言ったでしょ。どうせ話半分で聞いてたとかじゃないの。そうかな。そうなのかな。え、それでマキナも一緒に行くと。ああ、せやで。そ、そうなの。まあ、数日ぐらい楽しめ
。ああいうのがあるとね、意外に盛り上がるもんなのよ。イェーイバッファローゲームなんつってさ。Excuse me? はい。では、花ひげメガネはダックスープ社のグルーチョくん4号をご用意させていただきます。数は人数分でよろしくね。私とユージとあんたとユミコ。お言葉ですが、ミチル様。な何よお金なら払うわよその辺をむにゃむにゃにすると後で揉めるって分かってるんだからねい,いえそういった若干の生臭い話ではなくてですね実は私も明日から親戚の家に泊まり込みをすることになっておりましてですから3つで十分かとえー、そうなのな,なんでいろいろと込み入った事情がありますが、一言で表現しますと、頼まれたからです。It's actually, uh, no, that's, that's quite literally simple. It's not really、uh, complex at all. And I don't, know, I don't know if that's really a summary or maybe that's actually all. But knowing Sachi's story, that's kind of interesting. そ、そう。だったら仕方ないわよね。頼まれたら断れないものね。分かったわ、はあ、じゃあ3人でゆっくりと羽を伸ばすとしましょうね。Two sets should be plenty, Sachi. I'm not going to partake. えー、なんですぐに2つで十分って言いたがるのよ、もう。予備も含めて多くあった方がいいでしょ。4。I keep cutting her off, I'm sorry. 結局いくつ用意すればよろしいのでしょうか。Totally not doing it on purpose. 4個 !Two. では、二つ用意させていただきます。ああ、今何らかの上下関係を踏まえて判断した。ミチル様、物事には必ず優先順位というものが存在しますので。ですが、最初にきちんと四個用意しますが、そのうちの二個を持ってきます。ほらね、ミチル様、これで安心。確かに最初に私の言い分が守られてるならそれはそれでいいかもねはいではお買い物に行ってまいります Seems like it's going to get a good bit quieter around here ま,まあねでもさすがにこの広い量に二人きりってわけにはならないから大丈夫よヤミコがいるもんね、uh, Enter stage right Sakaki まあユミコでもいないよりはマシか<笑>旅行の準備もこれで終わり<笑><笑> I called it <笑> With beautiful timing Sakaki enters stage left Okay stage left not stage right Excuse me With an enormous suitcase I swear I did not read ahead or anything to prepare for this recording session It's just been quite coincidental An overseas vacation perhaps? Michiru watches in utter shock, her mouth flapping in a, matter, or in a manner strongly reminiscent of a stunned trout. Huh, you're taking a vacation as well, Sakaki. So, tomorrow. どうもしてないです。明日には出発だから、今日は早く寝なくちゃ。<笑> Meet you, my friend. <笑> Seems like it's going to be just you and me for a while. そ,そうで、そうで、ふ、ふ、あなたと二人きりなんてごめんだけどね。そもそもね。一つ屋根の下で年頃の男女が過ごすなんて異常なのよね。In that case, should I leave as well? If you're feeling anxious, I wouldn't hesitate to lodge at my workplace for a while. Don't want to make you uncomfortable. いや、いいわよ、別に。そ,その代わり、変なことしたら承知しないからね。Hmm. Two weeks isn't too long. If you find yourself unbearably anxious, I recommend simply holding up in your room until the others return. 
I'm sure you'll be able to handle a little solitary confinement. Alright, I guess. It is the next day, early ass fucking morning. As I'm setting out for my daily marathon the next morning, I discover a strange little scene. Michiru's skulking around the area in a blatantly suspicious fashion. She scuttles around the courtyard, keeping low and hugging the wall like a cockroach, shooting cautious glances all around her. Even for her, this is fishy behavior. God damn, there's some noise going on outside. In particular, the black hat riding on her head adds a distinctly surreal flavor. I'm sincerely glad the girl was born well past the witch hunting era. I decide to observe in an effort to determine her objective. Man, this is some Sly Cooper shit right here. What's she even doing up at this hour? I did once observe her heading for the sea around this time, but I'm pretty sure she was looking for her cat. And at that moment, the animal in question is firmly perched on the top of her head. In other words, there's something else going on here. Perhaps... This strange behavior might not be the usual Michiru. I don't mean that in a figurative sense, maybe the other Michirus emerged. The exact nature of this little ceremony is unclear to me, but she's wandering around the area, restlessly making me uh, freakish little noises. Or, yeah, around the area, restlessly making freakish... Did I miss something there? Oh well. The girl's never exactly normal, but this is particularly odd. Might it be the other one after all? Meet you to my friend. And now I'm deaf. Impressive vertical. Michiru jerks up into the air with a shriek of surprise, retreating a good meter in a single bound. Because we live here and attend the school. Right back at you, Matsushima Michiru. What are you up, or what are you doing up at this hour? Hmm. There's no wind today. Huh. Cram school at 5 in the morning? Very zealous. What's the name of this early bird educational facility, if, my, if I might ask? So that's a lie, right? Then what's really going on here? Well, this certainly isn't the normal Michiru, but it doesn't feel much like the other one either. No, tell me, is this the arrival of Michiru 3? Try telling me what's so dangerous. If I'm convinced, I'll do as you say. I think if we get an 8 on the Richter scale, there's other things to be worried about. That applies equally everywhere. Or anywhere. Anything else? We're getting nowhere. I think it's time to explore alternate strategies. Let's try going straight to the point. Tell me why you're really out here, and who you are. Good lord, she started spewing saliva in my general direction. Is this really the way young women act these days? Cease this disgraceful waste of bodily fluids immediately, maggot. 
Even if the God of Hydration forgives you, I never will. My ears are going to be ringing after this recording session. Her strong front quickly crumbles into a cramped, desperate grimace. That, or the girl looks about ready to burst into tears. I suppose withdrawing would be the gentlemanly thing to do at this point, or even slightly before it, honestly. Alright, understood. In that case, I'll be... Uh, right. Alright then, see you later. But in the end, that behavior was simply too unnatural to ignore. I temporarily return as far as the courtyard, but soon double back to observe Michidu from a distance. Beginning from a prostrate position, I advance with a standard JSDF low crawl to the vicinity of my target. As if choosing a sniping point, I move to a location that affords good visibility of the scene while providing me with optical cover. Alright, this should be nicely, or should do nicely. My view of this scene is unobstructed, and I have a clear escape route secured, an ideal observation spot. Even as she wanders around complaining about me, Michidu's petting the cat on top of her head. An abnormally d dexterous woman, if nothing else. And this pattern is interrupted by the unexpected arrival of Sachi. Does she have some knowledge of Michiru's secret purpose? Huh? The item? Seems to be a bartering session or be a bartering session of some kind. I've heard that dedicated smugglers are a common phenomenon in prison. Does the same system exist in the school? Shocking to think I'd catch my own classmates red-handed. For the sake of their futures, it would be best to stop this now. Nice try, punks. An unregistered gun deal on my beat? You got some nerve. Hands behind your head and kneel. Why does Sachi just straight up go for it? Sachi falls to her knees on the dirt as instructed. I walk up behind and wedge her thighs apart with my foot. Alright, no funny business. Spread those legs. Okay, don't make it weird. Silence. You're 10 years too young to be dabbling in black market weapon sales, you rank amateur. Hurry up and kiss the dirt. Hmm? But Sachi's obediently following my instructions, isn't she? It's a good point, actually. Now that you mention it, she... so she does. But if guns aren't involved, that would leave a drug deal? Alright, a methamphetamine test seems warranted. 
Stay where you are while we wait for the kids. Prepare for a urine test. Hmm. Is what she says true, Sachi? They were just using terminologies that people would use in that sort of shit. I see. Sorry about that. You can raise your head now. Interesting, I think. Buying a magazine? Surely you can handle that much on your own, Michiru. Awkward? What's awkward about it? Explain. I take the magazine from Sachi. The cover is a nauseatingly sparkly abomination featuring the prominent headline Beloved Barrette Beautification, an outfit straight from the marvelous military. What is this thing? Okay, forget the rest for now. First things first, I need to annihilate this company. That sounds about right. Bare knuckle justice. All right, Sachi, let's go. We're going to bring down that company with our fists. Huh? Ah, true. A lapse in judgment on my part. Well then, what's this rag supposed to be? I'm down with that. ちょ、サーチ。ごめん、それ以上は。こういった雑誌があることは知識として持っていたので買ってきたわけです。ですが、人に見られたくないということで、その結果が今の早朝取引です。Hell yeah, let's do it. Not particularly. なるほど。みちるさま、これと言ってないそうですよ。答えがわかってよかったですね。はい。どうもありがとうございました。では、私は出発の準備がありますので、失礼いたします。Her face bright red, Michiru bites her lower lip and quivers visibly. I don't quite understand the situation, but she also seems to be perspiring heavily. Did I say that right? Maybe. A stomach ache, perhaps? Michiru, my friend. That a fact? Utter silence. Michiru refuses to even make eye contact. Michiru, let me ask you something. What exactly is a beloved barrette? The Marvelous Military, is it? I pick up the abandoned magazine and jot down the address of a certain rotten publisher with insufficient or respect for the gravity of military affairs. Are we seriously going to go there? A few hours thereafter, everyone who's leaving for the summer vacation gathers in the courtyard outside the dorm. 
Hell yeah, leave it to me. And we'll continue on after a break, which will seem completely uh, non-existent for you guys. Because I'm just going to cut it out. But yeah, going to take a break. We are on the chapter titled Promise. Yeehaw on that one, brother. And we're back, just like that.私は日記外のやつ橋なら何でもいいわよ。分かったのよさ。うるさい金髪ね。じゃあね。ちょっと待ちな。これから出かけるんだから喧嘩しないの。だって私じゃないのよ。こいつがうだうだ言うから。言
Her voice is too quiet for an attempt at getting my attention. Perhaps I should just ignore her? Then again, she's finally left her room for the first time in days. So I suppose basic social etiquette would, di would dictate, excuse me, approaching her on my own initiative. What's wrong, Michiru? Need something? <coughs> my greeting was somewhat abrupt, but Michiru responds with an instant shriek of rejection. Pretty impressive reflexes. I see. In that case, I'll return to my reading. If she's got something to say, why not just spit it out? It's never easy with this girl. <laughs> After three full days shut up in her room, this is all she has to say? What's her deal anyway? Not that I really care, so long as she doesn't interrupt my reading. I find the page where I left off and return to the world of fiction. But soon enough, I'm emphatically ejected from that pleasant refuge. Specifically, she slaps the book out of my hands. I could have dodged, but decided it best to allow the girl to do as she pleases. At the moment, I'm thinking about picking up the book that just fell to the floor. So this is the other Michiru. You finally show yourself. I'd really like to know who you are this time. Michiru points next to where I'm sitting, then roughly drops down before I can say a word in response. Her, you don't like that, then how about this too attitude reminds me of a combined forces assault. Not at all. Hmm. This sounds like it's going to be a lengthy discussion. Maybe I should make some coffee first? Insufficient effort on her part, clearly. Guess she'd better practice more. Why feel nervous at this point? We're hardly strangers, and we already cleared up the unpleasantness between us. Surely there's nothing to feel awkward about. I really don't think that's true. I mean, I'm, I'm here, I'm listening. Fine, spare me the attitude and just say it already. After a light snap of the fingers, Michiru earnestly rests a hand on top of my thigh. Hmm. Dede, you'll need to elaborate. I don't understand why I should go on a date with you. Hold on a second. Why do I have to go on a date with Michiru? And even if I did date, or even if I did have some obligation along those lines, I don't understand why it matters that I propose the idea. An expression of genuine surprise on her face, Michiru peers into my eyes. 
それに怖いのよもし断られたら今後どう接していいかわからないじゃない What? She's never been turned down before? そうじゃなくてデート自体したことないのよ少なくとも私が見てるうちはそんなことは一回もなかった I think I cut her off. I refuse. In answer to Michiru's predictable response, I clear my throat and begin to explain. Yeah, I'll do that. <clears throat> Why do you get to decide this? If Michiru really wants me to date her, she can try saying so herself. Moving things along while she isn't here strikes me as meddling. And so, what if it is? You think? Personally, I think holding a conversation with something like you demonstrates a fair degree of mental flexibility. I do love the sound of my own voice. I've gotten used to it over the、uh, years. Michiru stands from her seat and flaps her hands around in an exaggerated gesture of exasperation. Not sure if you're one to be talking. Little Miss Trouble. Keeping the thought to myself, I pick up the fallen paperback book and search for the page I'd left off, left off on. Excuse me, goddamn. Previously, Michiru told me she found it frightening to have problems solved behind her back. I'm not about to start agreeing to secret plans for her benefit. Makes sense. Running my eyes along the printed lines, I return to enjoying the story. But after a little while, I once again feel the gaze of a certain someone on my face. No. Her voice clearly came out louder and higher in pitch than she, or than she expected. With a surprised little start, she takes it from the top. What's wrong, the usual Michiru? Not quite what I meant, but whatever. Well, technically, I flap the book in my hand in her general direction. I'm reading. Not really. You do know I enjoy books, right? Even if I were to run out of reading material to find myself with nothing else to do, I'd be perfectly content rereading a book from the beginning. I've done that. I'm having a hard time imagining how one could become. Busy to the point of instant death, but either way, I can't say my plate is particularly full at the moment. Sure, that's nice. Alright, l I'm gonna get back to reading my book now. Not necessary. Alright, l I'm gonna get back to my book now. Michiru is so transparently desperate that I can't help feeling a little sympathy. I suppose it couldn't hurt to play along with the girls' games. Well, hold on. I think you know I do a regular training course every morning. 
But tomorrow I was thinking about doing a little running later on as well. What do you think? When I come along on a little afternoon marathon? A fearsomely rapid response. I think I cut her off there. Michiru turns her back to me and begins rustling around furtively. What, you've got a day planner on you? Mind if I take a look? Michiru pretends to tap buttons on a calculator. Apparently this is her idea of what checking a schedule involves. Hmm. Well, managed to adjust your schedule. Any conflicting appointments? Hmm, I see. In that case, be in front of the school gate at 1 in the afternoon tomorrow, and I'll take you along with me. Fine, sure, whatever. Michiru, I don't recall begging you. What was close? And so it was agreed that Michiru would join in on my training. I was planning a fairly long distance course though. Wonder if she'll be alright. Also, I don't remember saying a word about a date. <laughs> well, we should have figured, in all honesty. The next day, I get out of bed at 4.45 a.m. as usual, and after some quick preparations, head outside for my early morning jog. But as I emerge into the lobby, I hear a strange clattering sound from Ichiru's room upstairs. I haven't heard anything about the girl tossing and turning in her sleep. wonder if something happened. Well, I guess it's nothing worth worrying about. <laughs> Fucking Yuji. At my normal time, I run my normal distance at my normal pace. Nothing out of the ordinary whatsoever. But such regularity is precisely the point of a routine course like this. I head back to my room, take a light shower to rinse off my sweat, boil my beans, and have my breakfast. While masticating steadily away, I ponder a certain philo philo philosophical dilemma, excuse me there. Do beans have emotions? Some claim that cacti can sense human feelings. What then of the bean? They don't scream when you boil them. But perhaps some among them know how to use their bean. Plants, that was terrible, plants might be aware of the world in their own unknowable way. Under such a hypothesis, even vegetarians would be monstrous mass murderers, brandishing their cruel, shining knives. They gruesomely flay innocent carrots, chop their bodies into sections, and then consume them to the core. Perhaps we should put a price on the head of those habitually cornflake-crunching serial killers. Hmm. Come to think of it, my stocks are depleted. This is no time to be thinking up idiotic puns. Without Sanchi and Amine around, I have no one to rely on for the procur procurement of my foodstuffs but myself. Suppose I'll take a quick break and then head to the supermarket. Feeling the calm, mid-morning sunlight on my skin, I'm almost tempted to set off for another run before my afternoon training. But there's no point to excessive exercise unless you're a masochist, or a masochist, excuse me, who finds pleasure in making your body scream. Of course, the act of running can be pleasant in its own right. I myself sometimes head out for a jog merely to change my mood. It's just a matter of moderation. I make my way back to the dorm, bags full of beans in both hands. I bought in bulk today. 
If I had slightly more goodness in my heart, I could probably get every small f uh, furry animal in a three mile radius through the winter with these. Then again, receiving a mountain of nuts outside my room in the spring from my grateful forest friends would be a serious nuisance. I think I'll consume these beans on my own. With this much in stock, my basic needs should be met for some time. Hmm? What on earth is that? There's a woman acting strangely in front of our gate. She digs into the ground with her tiptoes for a moment, only to abruptly twirl around in a circle on the spot. Don't tell me. That's Michidu? Not exactly what I would uh, expect out of runway. What on earth is that girl doing? I sincerely doubt the outside world will prove nearly so tolerant of her peculiar taste in headwear as we have. I did tell her to tag along on my afternoon training, but that's still a good three hours away. What's her objective here? Tell me, Michiru. What exactly are you doing out here? <coughs> After this undignified shriek of surprise, Michiru stares at me with a blank, dumbstruck expression. From all appearances, she seems to be in a state of shock. Is there something wrong with this girl? It's only clear now that I've approached her, but she has numerous bandages on her fingertips. Don't tell me that Mangy Cat bit her and pass on some strange disease. I did vaccinate the thing, but maybe it was too late. Hello, do you recognize me? Pull yourself together. Huh? Say what? <laughs> An improbable theory pushes its way into my mind. Please don't tell me she's seriously come to our meeting place a full three hours early. <laughs> Michiru, my friend. It's still a good three hours before the arranged time. When asked, did you wait long? I can only respond, no. In fact, I hadn't even begun. <laughs> Is this girl even hearing what I'm saying to her? Okay, Michiru, listen carefully. I'm just coming back from shopping at the supermarket by the station, and my training isn't for hours. I wasn't waiting for you, and I'm not going yet. Can you seriously not understand this? My supermarket bag still dangling from both hands, I stand there dumbfounded. The girl's completely off in her own little world. Michiru peers into my plastic bags with a face full of confusion. Beans have nothing to do with training. Listen, I'm gonna head back to my room to drop these off, so just... Stay where you are for now. Guess there's no helping it. I'll bring my schedule forward somewhat. Wow, I wonder. Almost? Like? Well, whatever. Incidentally, we'll be running on a road used by civilians, so remove the cat before we go. Yes, the one on your cranium. <laughs> You're disturbing me, woman. Alright then, stand by for the moment, understood? <laughs> I have a very bad feeling about this. I honestly have no idea what the girl's thinking. I only said she can come along for my training, right? What part of that prompted that simpering... Uh, simpering grin. Excuse me there. In the first place, is she seriously planning to run in those clothes? Even a pair of sneakers would have earned partial credit, but no such luck. Then again, hardly any point in complaining now. I'm the one who authorized her to accompany me, so... Or suppose I have to roll with it. <laughs> the feline has reclaimed its perch. 
How do you not notice something like that? Are the nerves in your head not functional? I like how she just doesn't even deny the cat anymore. Like, it's just a part of her life. I have no idea what was close to what. Strange woman, why place a cat on your cranium? Perhaps she's aware that U.S. Marines used to tie ropes around their heads to enable allies high in the rigging to distinguish friend from or friend from foe. You can just wear a hat with a four-leaf emblem on the top, Michiru. That insignia is something like an iconized version of the rope they used in the old days. I don't think I said anything of the sort, actually. Have to say, though, your clothes today leave a different impression than usual. Really? Yeah, I get the feeling you put in some real effort. That a fact? My impression was that you bought several outfits yesterday and carefully chose this one from the many you tried out this morning. Was I mistaken? You weren't in the dorm much yesterday, and you came back fr with bags from clothing stores in both hands. Also, I heard you clattering around first thing this morning. Hmm. You're a troublesome one, woman. Hey, hey, ho. Oh. oh boy. What's the matter, Yo <laughs> Yosaku? I thought we were being energetic. Something wrong? It's easier to calculate your distance that way, right? And consistent road conditions are best for training purposes. Hmm? We took regular breaks, didn't we? Five minutes every hour. What's the problem? Hmm. I suppose you have a point. It is around that time of day. A somewhat lengthy break might be in order. Her face brightening, Michiru points toward the high spot she's so fond of. No picnic. We're going back to the dorm, eating there, and then resuming our training. Field training in the distribution of portable rations, eh? Well, I suppose it can't hurt. And now she's energetic all of a sudden. <laughs> oh boy. I guess the cat found us. Happy to hear. Alright, we've pretty much hit an hour. Uh, probably not exactly an hour. So if I talk enough, maybe we will. But no, thanks guys. Thanks for watching, coming by, and watching this episode. The girl who tried too hard. Yeah. She is trying too hard. That is, uh, that is for certain. But no, thank you guys for, for coming by and watching, and 
I guess staying patient with the pace of this playthrough, and, and like I said in the beginning of the episode, the subgrowth has been very slow, so trying to do the every 50 subs an episode thing to wrap this up has not been easy. So I'll try something. We'll definitely get this playthrough finished up within the next few months. Maybe. Hopefully. I don't know. But anyways, if you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like. Subscribe if you want to see more. There's just going to be three more episodes, two more one-hour ones, and the last one will just be a big boy to wrap it all up. And then no more Fruit of Grisaille on the channel. That will be it. So look forward to that. I know I am. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Take it easy, guys.